You're listening to Puma Podcast. Hi, I'm Franco Luna Puma Podcast, and you're listening to Teka Teka News. In this episode, hey, man, ah, sa talo maglakad dito sa katipunan, bukod sa lubak lubak yung sidewalk, tas maliit yung sidewalk. You're competing for the space with the cars that are parked on the sidewalk. I mean, meron naman sidewalk eh, meron naman. But every other establishment has cars parked in front of it and they're on the sidewalk. So what should essentially be a straight walk is kind of you going around in circles, just avoiding the cars that are parked. I guess that's why even paint to signify who's supposed to be on the space. And to sort of ward off um, speeding drivers, I guess that's why it's so important, no? We talk about how a Twitter thread turned into safer streets for pedestrians and cyclists. I've lived here for essentially my entire college life and I have heard stories of pedestrians or cyclists getting run over here or hit by cars that are speeding. These are usually cars that are heading into Ateneo or heading for Aurora Boulevard. I think UCLG has been more focused on bringing a bit more road safety in uh, with the bike lanes. They've been one of the more proactive ones in keeping the bike lanes as is. But I mean, we see that, you know, uh, medyo kulang pa rin, but at, at least they're trying. And then they've been also trying to build more green spaces in spite of like the unavailability of green spaces nowadays in QC. You just heard Francis Caiga. He's a fresh graduate of political science from Atenea de Manila University. Francis made headlines after the Quezon City government responded to his tweet where he complained about those same sidewalks, and they eventually acted on it. It all started with a series of Twitter threads. This started off, in principle, just because of my participation in campus publications, so like the guide on um, That kind of encouraged me to like, be confident in writing threads, make things digestible. Um, that was really one of the central things that I wanted to to do or to strive for because there's so much information going on. And then, given that my advocacy was really centered on mobility, there were so many mobility stuff that were not that being informed or communicated to the people. Francis started sharing the fruits of his own research on the mobility situation of his college campus in Ateneo. He said it was all for personal learning because these things affected his daily life as a pedestrian. He looked up the prescribed sidewalk width under the accessibility law and the implementing rules and regulations of the National Building Code. First, he found out that Katipunan Avenue was a national road, which meant it wasn't under the city government's jurisdiction. But that also meant that cars weren't supposed to be parking on the road, a rule that's still being broken every day. Suddenly, the Quezon City government reached out via Twitter, and that led to a series of phone calls with the city engineers. I reached out again, given this confidence that I had to QC Engineering Department na, oh, pwede po ba ma-repair kahit konti man lang yung sidewalk and tapos po uh, maglagay po ng pedestrian lanes. Because I was looking at it from a very pragmatic approach na ano yung low-hanging fruit na kayang gawin. And then sabi nila, okay, hello po sir, yung request po, ganito. And then I went all in and then I said, pwede po ba rin yung mga pedestrian lanes doon po sa Rosa Alvero and F. De La Rosa? So, what was the first request? Um, yung sa sidewalk talaga, sidewalk. preparing a bit of the curb, make it more even. Hindi yung hindi pa nangyayari. Ah, ngayon ngayon nangyayari na siya. Kasi I actually followed up, then then bigla na lang sinabi sa akin, oh sir, uh, na ready na po yung materials, bukas na po gagawin. I'm standing here na sa intersection ng uh, Fabian de la Rosa Street and C5 Katipunan. I've actually lived in this area for a few years. Ngayon lang ako nakakita ng painted sidewalk dito. Painted na tawiran. Um, it's much clearer. 
Um, it used to be faded at one point, and I think even before that, walang painted na tawiran altogether. That's right, there are now pedestrian crossing lines in key intersections along Katipunan. You might have already seen them yourself. They're along De La Rosa and Rosa Alvero. Francis says the request was to have lanes painted to signal drivers to slow down when turning to keep pedestrians safe. There's still no proper stoplight for when pedestrians know when to start walking. But, uh... It's a start, right? It signifies that you can walk here and that uh, motorists should be yielding to you if you're a pedestrian walking on these lines. Malaking bagay yan. As a cyclist, Francis experienced the hazards of poor quality sidewalks and roadways firsthand. Just 16 days after his request, the sidewalks close to Rosa Alvera Street were sealed off to make way for repairs. A lot of people online especially have told me that, you know, the elevated crosswalks would help a lot, um, making cars really slow down. Um, but I think that's maybe the next step. But for now, pedestrian lanes would offer a bit of that safety to some extent and hopefully people regain the consciousness or like the understanding that this is why pedestrian lanes are important no matter how small they may be for many of us. They give us a bit of safety and a bit of assurance na kung ano mang mangyayari, kaya natin ma-argue in favor to us. Now you might be asking why all this attention for what is essentially a fresh coat of paint on an aging sidewalk. Francis says it's much more than that. Sidewalks give you a bit of the legal backing whenever a car just does something weird out of norm. Alam mo yung mga cars na bigla na lang dadaan sa pedestrian lane, even though you're still in the middle of it. So, if there's any altercation with that, you still you have more of a leverage to say na, you know, this car was not following the rules. It's not following the law. He was talking about the Land Transportation and Traffic Code, which was enacted in June of 1946. Basically, the law compiles and consolidates all regulations related to land transportation and traffic. But did you know the law only mentions pedestrians three times? It also has never been amended since then. Under Chapter 4, Article 3 of the law, pedestrians have the right of way over vehicles at all intersections and crosswalks unless otherwise indicated by traffic signs or signals. That's why paint on the road like the one Francis called for is extremely important. According to RA 4136, if there are no traffic enforcers or no traffic lights, it's just a pedestrian lane. Pedestrians have the, the right of way. Um, dapat sila yung mauunan, hindi yung sasakyan. The cars have to slow down and really move slowly. And that's the main purpose of pedestrian lanes. By the way, we recently did a story about road safety on Parapo, our mobility segment unpacking Metro Manila's transportation woes. If you want to learn more about the four Filipino children who die every day in road crashes, just search Para Po May Tumatawid Na Bata on this channel. But back to Francis. It was that understanding of the law, along with a bit of digging around on the city government systems, that eventually pushed him to reach out. Alam mo naman yung mga sistema sa website, yung mga LGUs and whatnot, hindi pa masyadong um, informed or like very well communicated to the people. So sabi, nakita ko yun, and then may mga sistema sila for like sidewalk repairs, curb repairs. So sabi ko na lang, okay, uh, pwede po ma repair yung sidewalk dito sa may shitties katipunan kasi a lot of students pass through that and then nagre-reklamo sila na, oh, um, besides yung double parking na nangyayari doon, napakapangit daw nung sidewalk, sobrang uneven. Uh, minsan may natatapilok. So I was like, maybe we can start there. Once he saw that there was tangible progress in just a matter of days, he decided to take it a step further. He followed up and made more requests. Even during our interview, the Quezon City Engineering Department was reaching out to give him updates on their progress. Follow-ups turned into constant communication, which made all the difference. He spoke his mind, and the city government listened and saw merit in it. I went all in with the pedestrian crosswalks because my reasoning was that these turns papuntang paloob ng local road, mabilis yung pinanggagalingan ng mga cars. So, minsan kapag nagtuturn sila, the pedestrians are quite unsafe. And then, I said that to them. And interestingly enough, they understood the reasoning na 
Oh, oh nga po, mabilis nga po dumadaan yung mga cars galing Katipunan Avenue papunta sa pag nagta-turn sila. We're pausing for a quick break now. When we return, what does this mean for local participation? And then for the last tweet, yun sa update of like the pedestrian lanes, I just wanted to give props to QC Engineering Unit na, oh, wow, pedestrian lanes. I was actually surprised because di ako na-inform. Para na-inform ako ng mga friends ko na nakita lang nila out of nowhere. Oh, have you guys seen this? Has, has this ever been here before? And I was like, oh, wow, they really did it. And I'm like, oh, well, interesting. Again, that was Francis Caiga whose tweets paved the way for safer streets for pedestrians. Pero hindi lang siya QCLG victory story or a mobility and transportation story. It's also a victory for local governance as a whole. Local stories aren't as sexy as national ones, but Francis says engaging at the local level can make all the difference. And I think that's something that I wanted to do as a Paul Sai student especially. Na there is an opportunity at the local communities that you have. Approach your barangays, especially since the elections will be coming up. Um, later on this year, there is an opportunity in the, your local communities to engage with the people, your neighbors, and do something for them or with them. And I think with that, you can see already some change in your vic- vicinity. You don't have to go as far as the national just for some change to happen. And for Francis, this participation can also look like an earnest phone call with engineers from the LGU. It doesn't take away from what the city hall was able to do. But Francis says that speaking out definitely played a big part in making all this possible. Right after I made the call, nagtweet ako. I was saying that uh, I, I requested this pedestrian lane sidewalk. How long will it will this take? I mean, no one necessarily answered. Parang sabi lang nila na you know depends sa priorities of mayor and all that. And then it got a bit of of engagement, mga 300 likes, and then some retweets out there. I guess through my discussions also with other with other friends. Well, feeling ko may factor parehong yung reality. I think it gives more of a an eye over to CLG to move forward with the request, knowing that this person that tweeted has quite a bit of the attention now. So if ever that he follows up with another tweet or something like that, maybe maiba yung yung perspective ng mga tao sa CLG. Francis says all he wanted to do was to show people that things could work well at the local level. Even if it means explaining to the city government how things like sidewalks matter to ordinary citizens, the message from this is clear. Makayalam tayo sa mga nangyayari sa komunidad natin. Like Francis, we might also find our words become grounds to stand on, and there will always be those opportunities in our local communities. And maybe there's something we can all learn from that experience. I think for me, it's it's been quite the culmination of my four years in college. It's been an interesting way to close the book. I mean, the threads really rooted in how I wanted to make information more digestible, communicate information that has not been very accessible to other people, use social media platforms because that's very available, that's readily available, and then communicating with QCLG and pursuing it uh, really centered on my Paul Sai background of really talking to LGU, making the theory more into practices, really seeing it happen. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka News. Again, I'm Franco Luna. This episode was edited by Freddy Blanco. If you like this episode, share it with a friend or two. And of course, don't forget to follow Teka Teka News and Puma Podcast on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. Thanks for listening.